Hello and welcome to the Feeling Good Podcast. I am your host, Fabrice Nye, and joining me here in the Murrieta Studios is Dr. David Burns. Hi, David. Hi, Fabrice. Dr. David Burns has been a pioneer in the development of cognitive therapy, and he is the creator of the new team therapy. He is the author of Feeling Good, which has sold over 5 million copies in the United States and has been translated into over 20 languages. He is an emeritus adjunct clinical professor of psychiatry at the Stanford University School of Medicine. Welcome to episode 53 of the Feeling Good podcast. And uh, today we have um, uh, an Ask David podcast with a question from one of our listeners that has to do with procrastination. Uh, this is from Benjamin, and uh, he wrote um, after the uh, Marilyn Life podcast, which apparently he was very impressed by. But uh, here's his question. Um, he says, uh, um, I would love to hear about how you treat people suffering from chronic laziness, uh, do-nothingism, In particular, there seems to be a strong potential of a catch-22 with process resistance. The patient cannot find the motivation to do anything, yet they have to carry out the process to do the homework in order to improve. Even worse, in the book Feeling Good, you categorize do-nothingism into around 10 different categories, and you suggest a different approach for each one. What should a lazy person do who identifies with multiple categories but is already starting to feel overwhelmed at the prospect of doing one of those activities, let alone five of them? Well, I think this is a great question because I've been wondering the same thing myself, you know, what what to say to somebody who comes to me with uh, a procrastination problem and, and here I am, I'm loading him up with more stuff to do. Um, So, kind of a conundrum, don't you think? Absolutely, because... uh not only are you giving us a good topic for the podcast, but it's also kind of inspiring when I'm thinking, well, what should we do? Yeah, we, we need those people asking me what they, what they want to know. You know? Yeah, and then when asking I get us- a, an email, like, and she, she deserves tremendous praise. What a gift that she's, she's given me, uh, you know, well thought out and provocative. Then I get all kind of fired up and excited uh, and, and tremendous numbers of things come to mind. Yeah. Uh, be, before we go into the details of it, I would like to say that my approach to procrastination has, has changed radically over the years from the times when I wrote uh, Feeling Good. What, what year did Feeling Good come well, out? Well, it came out in 1980. So that's quite a while ago. Yeah. And so there's Boy, been, you're old. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm going to be 75 in uh, about a week or four days or yeah. something like that, actually. Uh, Happy birthday! So, thank you. Yeah, I'm old old fart now. I kind of kind of enjoy my old fartness. To to be honest with you, uh, it's a very very happy and rewarding time of life. But that's for perhaps another day. But too big change is, I no longer try to help people who procrastinate and see that as a basic different to, way to work with someone who's asking for help with with procrastination. Uh, one one. Um, theme uh, that will be clear by the end of the uh, podcast is is that if you try to help someone who's procrastinating, it will actually make their procrastination worse, but now it'll be your fault. Yeah, exactly. So they'll be able to procrastinate, and the therapist is the one who's failed to to help them. Yeah. And so it took me some years to figure that out and to to get over that, but getting over that led to a really powerful, uh, new and radically different way of of treating people who procrastinate. And the second thing is a basic concept of, do you have expertise in Buddhism? And I don't. But that, Not expertise, no. Well, just, you have more than the idea is in in all of team therapy, and this is a radical departure from one brief moment of his or her life. Just just one, say for a minute of your life, I, I could help you. That the, the treatment always has to be focused on one specific moment when when the patient needs help. In this right. case, one specific moment when the person is thinks they're going to be procrastinating. Uh-huh. Uh, and and but then if you can help them solve the problem at that one specific moment, then they can generalize that to to other times when they're confronted with with the same issue. Yes, yeah, the specificity phase of the agenda setting for those who care yeah. To- but it's more than a practical uh, 
therapy tool or concept. It's 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 a kind of a profound philosophical concept as as well. And and I won't belabor it too much now. But I've been writing about this uh, in my new book, uh, which is tentatively called Feeling Great, and where I'll be presenting a lot of a lot of the new material on motivation and resistance and paradoxical agenda setting. But again, I've been noticing, and this could be another if you wanted to do it, but a lot of our suffering comes from generalizations where we're generalizing from some specific flaw yeah. to, to the self. So you say, well, my marriage broke up, so I'm unlovable, the type of thing, or I failed at this, or, or I've never accomplished anything very very uh, tr- tremendous. I, I'm just kind of average or below average. I'm, I'm kind of an inferior uh, hu- human being. Or you beat up on yourself because some uh, screw up, you know, you fly off the handle with your kids and you think, yeah. oh, I'm a bad father, What, whatever. And these are all generalizations. Yeah. And, and the, the, uh, the enlightenment comes from focusing on something specific yeah, and see what what is the specific error that you made, and then you can either just accept the fact that you screwed up, uh, or, or or you can make a plan to co- to correct that that specific. Well, generalizing, you know, comes from the fact that we believe there's a self. Yeah, yeah. To, to be applied to generalization too. So <laughs> exactly, and that's the other cool half of that. So maybe, and we're going to do a podcast on that too. Yeah, yeah okay, because that that'll that'll be a fun one, uh, and I don't know how much progress will made. Buddha tried to. Convince people of this 2,500 years ago, and most of them couldn't get it. So we'll we'll see if we can do a better job than he did. Maybe, maybe so, maybe not. But it, it's really exciting, and this is the same thing. I can only help someone who procrastinates by helping them at one specific time. And so let, let's go through an example, and and I'll show exactly how I would handle it from a therapeutic point of view. And if you if you want, we could take one of my own procrastinations which was in, in my office. Uh, I, I have, as, as you know, downstairs about 15 feet of desk space that wraps oh, yeah. around, all yeah. around two of the walls. And what I used to do, and it was very kind of seductive and enticing, was to, when I get a piece of paper, like a letter or a receipt of some kind, just kind of throw it on a pile on yeah. the desk. And those it's piles... Horizontal filing. Yeah, horizontal filing, that's right. And they got to where they were all about... I'd get a pile about 12 inches high and then start another one. Mm-hmm. And that went on for a good 10 years. And so... Uh, With and 15 feet of desk, you know, you can yeah. go for a while, yeah. Yeah, so there was this... From one end of the desk to the other except for the, where my computer was, which mm-hmm. was clear with the the keyboard, but everything else was like 12 inches high yeah. with all these unfiled uh, things. And so how how would we approach that? How would we help someone who says, I want help with my with my filing? But it could be with your taxes. It could be you're per- maybe procrastinating cleaning your garage or working on your dissertation or, or uh, you know, vir- vir- virtually anything. Now... The, the the first thing I ask the patient is, uh, let, let's say the patient says, yeah, I'll be both the patient and the doctor, and, and we can do some role-playing yeah. too. But uh, uh, say, yeah, yes, uh, I, I'd like some help with my, my filing in my office. And then I might say, well, what, what kind of help would you be looking for? I go, well, you can empathize first as a therapist, but then... You say, suppose we had a kind of magic button here and or some magic miracle happened in today's session. What miracle would you be asking for? Well, I'd be doing what I need to do. Yeah. And what I should be doing. Yeah, exactly. And how, how what kind of help would, would you need with, with that? If I could give you some miraculous help. Well, you know. So you're, you're the doctor. You you, you know what uh, what to say. Well, what most people ask for is they say, say, "I need help with motivation." Yeah, motivation. Yes. Yeah, I want. I, I just. I don't, want to be more motivated. Yeah, yeah I, I I just I, I I don't feel like it. And I used to think that it was my job to help people with that. That mm-hmm. was that was actually uh, my error. And so what I would now say to the person is, you know, we're not offering that in the cafe this week. It's not on the menu. All we have is the blue plate uh, special, which is a, a little less less fancy. 
but uh, I, I can certainly help you uh, get get working on your desk and and solve that problem. But you're not entitled to motivation. Uh, you, you're you're probably thinking that motivation comes first and then productive action. And that's a big uh, illusion to, to get uh, that you're trapped in. And most productive people know that uh, action comes first and motivation comes second. So right. you're really not entitled uh, right now to be motivated uh, to, uh, you know, straight and do all that filing, uh, all that filing yeah. in, in your that, office. That's the proverbial uh, card before the horse. E exactly, exactly. But I say, uh, but but if you would like some help with, with the, the, your procrastination on your desk, um, what what... What time of day would you like me to help you? And that's when you get into the specifics. Yeah, and they might say, well, like yesterday I was procrastinating, and I will say, well, I can't help you yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yesterday is gone. And then they might say something like, well, tomorrow I, I should get to work on it. And say, I can't help people tomorrow either. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, would, would, you, would you want some help today? And so a patient might say, well, okay, yeah, yeah, I'd like some help today. And then I say, well, what time of day would you like the help? And uh, they might say, well, uh, this is 2 o'clock, my session's from 2 to 3, and you know, I'll get home from work at, at 6, so how about at, at 6 o'clock? And I say, okay, now let's, let's see what, what you need help with. And, and then I have this thing called uh, little, little Steps for Big Feats. Mm -hmm. Let, let's see what, what you need help with and, and, and break it down into little tiny steps. Each one can be completed in five seconds or 10 seconds or 30 seconds or something like that. So let's do this together. What's the first thing David would have to do at six o'clock if he's going to start working on, you know, his... Walk into his office. Okay, let's put that down. Number one, walk, walk, into, walk into my office. And then we might say now... Um, is that something you're you're going to need my help with? Have you ever done that before? Yeah, no, that's fine. You think you can I, do that? I, I can handle it. <laughs> okay. What what what's the second step that you'd like some help with? What what's the what would you have to do next? Well, you... d deciding where to start. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you have to sit down first? Uh, maybe, maybe not. You know, it's all over the place, so sitting would not be helpful. Okay, so um, so you'd have to choose one of those piles. Something like that. Well, I, I want to be specific here. I don't oh. know exactly what is the second thing you'd have to do. Well, um, yes, at least choose a, a pile to start with. Yeah. Okay, choose choose a pile to start with. Uh, is that something you need my help with? I uh, I don't know where to start. Okay, what type of help would you like from me on choosing a pile? Help me, help me, helping me choose. Mm -hmm. What what kind of help would you be looking for? Um, <laughs> tell me where to start. <laughs> <laughs> On the left. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't want to tell you what, where to start. I've never been in your office. <laughs> uh, but if you're saying that you wouldn't be able to choose one of those piles, I would totally understand it. Maybe we could work on something else then. Well, you said you would be uh, um, giving me some help with uh, choosing where to start. So it's not clear what kind of help you're looking for. Well, I I uh, I get indecisive when I look at this whole thing. I mean, there's so much to do. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, well, maybe you're saying because there's a lot to do and because you're feeling indecisive, maybe you're saying you wouldn't want to choose a pile. And you know, that's cool. That's okay with me. Well, I I want to. I just I just don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, since you don't know where to start, and perhaps you're thinking there's some correct pile that you have to figure out, maybe yeah. then this isn't something we should be working on. Because actually, I don't know if there's a correct pile. That's probably not something I could help you with. Oh, wow. So what do we do then? I can, we can do whatever you like. I'm, you're, I, I... you're paying for my time. <laughs> I, I want my office to get cleaned up. Okay, well, would, would you have to choose a pile to, to start to work on first? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that something you're willing to do? Yeah. Okay, what, what pile are you going to choose? I don't know. Mm -hmm. If I knew, I would do it. I just don't know. Mm -hmm. So are you saying you have to know the exact correct pile to start on? Yeah. 
Okay, well, I I don't wouldn't know how to figure that out. So maybe maybe I'm not the therapist you're looking for. Wow. Okay. Thank you, doctor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have a good life, my friend. <laughs> Okay, so uh, uh, time out here. So, so what what just happened? Well, you 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 can explain it. Yeah, what what did just happen? Well, um, you know, we we have a patient here who's um, looking for the therapist to solve the problem for him. Right, right. And you know, you are not particularly helpful by you know putting that in clear to to the patient. It's like, oh, I, I just can't help you with that. Right. Um, you you could maybe have uh, um, you know guided him a little bit more by saying, "Well, um, if you're willing to choose, then we we can move forward with this." But um, that's not something I can do for you. Yeah. So you would have to say, you know, it, you have to be willing to to do this without my help. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You'll have to. You'll have to make a choice. Should we see what would happen if the patient says, "I'm willing to choose a pile"? Yeah. Yeah. So let's say that uh, they're going. Okay, I'm, I'm going to do it. So I, I'll, I'll choose a pile. Okay. How will you choose the pile? I'm going to throw a dart. That sounds like a good approach. That's the <laughs> one I was thinking of, actually. Okay. So now, you, let's say you've chosen the pile on on the end. What what would you what's the next step? What's the next thing you'd have to do? Something that would take five or ten seconds? I'll probably uh, look at the first uh, piece of paper on top. Pick it up and look at it. Yeah. Okay. Is uh, so we're that's step three. Write that down. Pick up first piece of paper. Now is is that something uh, that you would need my help with? So now I'm traumatized. <laughs> I don't want to say yes anymore. Would you need my help? Have you ever picked up a piece of paper before? Yeah, yeah. So you think you can do that? <laughs> I can do that. So you pick up and, and, and you look at it. And then what's the next th- step you'd have to do? Would you have well, to, for example, gra- grab a manila file folder? Well, it, it will depend on the piece of paper. You know? mm-hmm. I don't know. Some of those are bills, and you have to do something with them. Others, you know, you have to. I don't know. It depends on on what it is. Okay. So, um, so what would you have to do next? Say, if, if it's a bill. If it's a bill, um, um, it would have to. I don't know. I guess. I don't know where the bills go. I don't really have a place for bills. Mm-hmm. Do you have a file folder that's marked bills? A blank vanilla file folder that you could put bills no, on? No, no, but I could do that. Okay. Would that be the, the next step then? Grab a file folder and put a... Yeah, by default, yes, because I, I don't know what else to do otherwise. Okay, so step four is put it in a file folder and label the file folder. Yeah. Okay, is that something you've ever done before? Yeah. And is that something you need my help with? <laughs> No way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then what, what's the fifth thing that you'd have to do once, once you did that? You have it in your hand. You've, you've labeled it, put it in there, and you're holding the file folder. What would you have to do next? Well, I don't know whether I need to pay the bill or whether I, I don't. I, it depends on when the bill is due. Mm-hmm. So I guess you, I have to open it if it's an envelope. Mm-hmm. Right. So do you want to work on catching up on your filing or do you want to work on paying your bills? I uh, I don't know. I guess that was uh, that was part of the same the same uh, action. I guess is it, is it not? Well, that's a, that's a choice you you can make. <clears throat> so um, hey, I I guess uh, well let's let's do the filing so that that will cover more. Uh, okay, so then if you thing. decide just to pay the bill later, then you've you, you've got the file folder, and what would you then do with the file folder? Ah, well, I'd need to put it somewhere. I think I, I guess I need a a um, what do you call it a um, um, a folder case. Mm-hmm. Do you have one of those? No. Okay, so what could you do since you don't have a like a, a file cabinet or a box file to cabinet, put it yeah. in? Where could you put it? 
I hate to say it, but it sounds like another pile, but I don't want to do that. Maybe I need to get myself a, uh, a file cabinet. So would you we want to just drop this assignment then? Maybe you could work on, you know, getting a file cabinet. Is that something you'd prefer to do? You don't want to do, get started on your filing, I think. Well, I, I guess I need a file cabinet if I want to do my filing. Mm -hmm. So you don't have any file cabinets in your office? I have some drawers. I guess I, I could put them in drawers. Okay, so you could put that one in a drawer? Yeah. Okay, put it put it in a drawer. Now, um, is, is that something you need my help with? I can figure it out. Okay. Now, what I'd, I'd like to ask you a, a question. And by the way, you were an unusually challenging challenging patient. Oh, I know, yeah. yeah. I was, they that's, always tell me good. that. You're, you're my 15th therapist. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, the... Uh, uh, but the next thing is called called the five minute rule. So you 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 said you'd like to do get started on your filing tonight at six o'clock. Is that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the the next thing is the five minute rule. Uh, would would you agree to to do this between six and six o five p.m. T tonight? Okay, uh, and then that that's your assignment is completed at that at that time. Do you, do you agree to that? Okay, and if you want to do any more, you you can, but you don't get credit for it. You only get credit for working on this from uh, six to to six o five. Okay, you agree to that? Sure. Okay. Now, by the way, just to break from the role play, the, the rationale here is that a lot of times people procrastinate, including myself and possibly yourself, get overwhelmed by thinking about all that you have to do. And so then you end up do, doing nothing. And, and so that's why I require the person to agree only to, to five minutes worth of work. And I kind of learned this from, from running when I run, I sometimes get kind of overwhelmed. I can, oh, I have to go two miles or I have to go so far. I used to, you know, go six mile runs and stuff like that. And, and I would suddenly feel a loss of energy and, oh my gosh, I've got so far to go. But then I would say, well, can I go from here to the telephone pole, which is maybe 50 feet away mm -hmm. or even 10 feet away? Oh, well, I can do that. And then, well, can I go to the rock? Can I go to the stop sign? And it's the same idea to focus on just one little small unit of, of work. Now, the next thing I would say, uh, let, let's see if we can make a list and you can make a list too. Let's call this, take a line down the middle of a piece of paper and label the left-hand column problems and the right-hand column uh, solutions. What problems do you think you might encounter tonight at 6 o'clock that will get in the way? The things that, that usually, uh, you know, maybe you'll say I'm hungry or a phone call or, you know, what are the things that, that will might prevent you from uh, completing this assignment tonight at 6 o'clock? Oh, probably just not feeling like doing it. Okay, problem number one, I, I won't I won't feel like it. Now, what would be the uh, solution to, to that problem? How are you going to solve that problem? I don't know how to make myself feel like it. So the, the first thing you'll have to do is to walk into your office, right? Yeah. And you're saying you won't feel like walking into your office? That's right. Because uh -huh. so, I, I know what's awaiting me. Yeah. So can you? is there some solution that you could come up with for that problem? I don't know. Because it might be an insolvable problem, in which case we could work on something else and not work on the filing. Well, didn't you say that um, it's possible to, to do this even when I don't feel like it? So, right. So how would, how would you do that? How would you solve that problem? How would you get your body into your office when you don't feel like it? Is it possible to do that? Can I call you at six o'clock and say, "Hey"? Well, well, you can call me, but not at six. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'll come to a telephone call in a few minutes. But 
you're, you're going to have to solve this one, you know, on, on your own at six o'clock. And it might be an, an insolvable problem. Have you ever been able to get your body into the office before? Have yeah. you ever been in your office? Yeah, yeah. I do that uh, well, at least once a day. Oh, yeah. And how, how do you do that? Uh, I don't think about what's in there. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. Well, can you think of any... I just go to check my email or something right. like this. But, you know? but at 6 o'clock, you'll realize you have five minutes worth of work. Um, so how are you going to get yourself into the office when you don't feel like it? Well, I can tell myself it's only five minutes worth. So at least I, I can... Oh, okay. Let's I put can that, minimize it. Put that in the right-hand side. Uh, I, I can I can remind myself... It, 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 it's only f- five minutes. Do you, does that sound like a, an adequate solution to you? Yeah, that will do. Yeah, it sounds good this. to me too. That's one of the reasons I say let's just set it up for five minutes. In fact, you might even be able to complete these f- five steps in less than, than five minutes. Mm-hmm. Now, what's, what's another problem that you're going to have that, that's going to interfere? I don't know. Um... What kind of things get in the way? When... I may be late getting to to my house, so it might, might not be. It might be after a six or five when I get there. So. Well, okay. So probably could be traffic. Two, you know? tra- traffic might delay me to um, a later time. So, how would you solve that problem? Is that a solvable problem? Well, once it happens, then it's it's too late. Um, I'd have to maybe leave work early, just to be sure. But I don't know. I mean, I it depends. My workload is uh, not always predictable. Mm-hmm. So maybe this is not a solvable problem. Maybe. So should we work on something else instead? Well, we we can you know, hope that this problem does not occur. Yeah, but but there there could be a traffic delay, and you might not get home say till six o five. Right, that that could happen. So if if that happens, then we'll we'll do that again tomorrow. Well, I don't even wouldn't even want to take on the assignment of the procrastination unless we could find a solution to this problem because tomorrow you'll you'll have a, another similar. Similar problem. Yeah, but it's it's you know it's unlikely that it will happen several days in a row. Um, it's just that I. Well, it could be some other problem though, and and if if you're determined to to get that five minutes start on on your filing to, tonight, uh, then then you'll have to find some solution to to this problem. But there may be well, no solution. Maybe to it. we should change the time then. Not make it six o'clock because that would be you know cutting it too close. Okay, so what what time would you like? To... Well, we'll call that seven. So seven. Okay, good, good, good enough. So we'll uh, we'll uh, re- reschedule for for seven. Yeah, that that's that gives a, gives me more leeway. You know, great. That that would be fine. Great. Now, what what other problems are going to interfere with your doing this at seven? From seven to seven o five. I can't think of anything else. There's nothing that's ever gotten in the way of, you know, doing something you were putting off. Um, like a friend calling my, you my or own getting procrastination. hungry. Or, uh, well, I don't know what that means, but I mean a specific thing that will actually happen. That some some something that's going to interfere with with your doing this. Um, nothing that is likely to happen tonight. Okay, so we've so you can give an ironclad guarantee then that you'll do that from seven to seven o five tonight. Um. Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah. Whether or not you feel like it, you guarantee that you will do this. Yeah. Okay. Would you call my office, uh, my my number at seven o five and leave one of two messages? Either I stubbornly refused or mission accomplished. I stubbornly refused? I'm not refusing. Well, then, I mean, if you, at 7.05, if you've done it, then you can call and say mission accomplished. Oh, sure. But if you haven't done it, you'll call and say, I stubbornly refused. I stubbornly refused. Oh, 
well, I, I guess that would, I, it's not that I refused, you know, maybe something, something came up. So it sounds like you don't want to call me at 7.05 and leave one of those two messages. Oh, sure. No, I'm, I will need to do that. Uh, I, I can't imagine myself saying that I refused. Yeah. Well, if you don't want to agree to it, let's be, be clear right now. Okay, I agree. And you'll say I stubbornly refused if, if it's not done by 7.05. Sure, that, that'll be the message. Okay, great. <laughs> now, just as an aside, uh, every patient... There were a few who said, I'll do the assignment, but I don't want to make that silly phone call. All failed to do the assignment. So if the patient doesn't agree to that, I again withdraw the assignment and, and, and say, well, let's, let's work on something else. Mm -hmm. Every patient who agreed to make the phone call did, in fact, complete the assignment. Yeah. Now, there's two other pieces of this. One that I forgot to do... Uh, a paradoxical agenda setting piece, and then the the TikTok te technique, and so let me just fill in fill in briefly. Before we went into what time would you like to work on the filing, and mm -hmm. and what are the the five steps? I should have done a little paradoxical agenda setting, and 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 asked you what what are some of the the really good reasons not to. Uh, you know, gets caught up on your filing. What, what are some good reasons to keep procrastinating on, on it? Let, let's make a list well, together. It's going to take forever. Okay, it'll take forever. It'll take me days, maybe weeks to uh, yeah. to get the whole thing done. That, that's a good reason. And what, What's another good reason to procrastinate? Well, if I don't spend all that time on it, I'll have more time for other things. Mm-hmm. And could we save more time for, for other more important and rewarding things? Actually, yes. You know, filing is, you know, it declutters the, the office, but at the same time, clutter is not that bad. Yeah, cl cl clutter is not that bad. In fact, it, it kind of shows someone who's actively involved in life. Well, you know, empty, that's pushing it a little bit, but sure. <laughs> well, an empty clean office is kind of sterile, right? Uh, some what, what are some say. other good reasons to procrastinate? It's it's a lot of work. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a lot of thinking, thinking work. Yeah, a lot of work. And and would it also be true that's anxiety provoking? Yeah, it is. It's uncomfortable. Yeah. And and any other uh, good reasons to procrastinate? It'll take a lot of work, weeks, take a long time. If you don't file, you'll have more time for other things that are far more fun, far more rewarding, something good on TV, other, other more important, exciting chores. Clutter is really not bad. It's just someone's rule that mm -hmm. we should have this organized office. Uh, it's a lot of work. It's anxiety-provoking. Any other reasons? Uh, it hasn't really prevented me from you know, doing things I want to do, except on occasion, but really. It's, it's not a real problem most of the time. Yeah. Uh, of the time. And so I would ask you to continue this list until we've got all the list, and then I would say, well, then why, why should we be working on this? Yeah, that's a good point. Would you like to work on something else then? Yeah. <laughs> well, I have nothing else to work on, actually. <laughs> well, that was my we, only problem in my we life. could play chess or something <laughs> in, in, in today's session. Yeah. And so that would be, also be the paradoxical agenda setting. I, I would make the patient convince me mm -hmm. that he really does have, have some good reason to, to, to get this going. And, and I know in my own case that what you're saying is remarkably similar to what I was thinking and feeling, uh, and that's why I didn't, why I let it go for ten, 10 years. And then the only thing that, that ended up motivating me was discovering that, uh, my goodness, I might need some of these documents for my licensure renewal, for the internal revenue service, uh, and mm -hmm. I began to get anxious about how awkward it would feel not to locate crucial documents, and that was the thing that actually actually got me motivated. Uh, but the patient would have to motivate me, and I would take the role of his subconscious or her subconscious resistance, listing all the reasons 
to keep procrastinating. Mm -hmm. Now, the last step in this process is called the, the, the TikTok technique. And this is something I put in, in the Feeling Good book. This is one really nice technique that mm -hmm. I have preserved from mm -hmm. the early days. And I have to uh, uh, credit Aaron Beck with this technique. At least I learned it from him. And he might have picked it up from someone else. I don't know if he created it or not. But TIC stands for Task Interfering Cognitions, and TALK stands for Task Oriented Cognitions. The last step I would do with, with our procrastinator is to say, let's list all the thoughts that you have when you're procrastinating, and tonight at 6 o'clock, all the thoughts that are going to interfere, task interfering cognitions, with your agreement to, to do this, this five minutes of, of, of filing. Uh, and and if, I don't know, if, if you have a piece of paper, you can write some of them down, or I'll, I'll do the writing yeah. right, right here. Yeah. So what, what are some of the thoughts that you're going to have? Um. Five minutes is not going to help. Beautiful. Five minutes won't help. It's just a drop in the bucket. Yeah. Number two. What's another task interfering thought? Um, even if I get something done, I'll, I'll just relapse. Yeah. It's not going to cure me forever. Yeah. That's a great one. What, what, are, what are some others? Um, well, some of the things we talked about earlier, oh, it's not such a big problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. What, what are some more? I can come up with all kinds of uh, other things I could do instead. Yeah, and such as yeah. what? Go watch TV. And what's your favorite thing on TV? Um, I don't know, Game of Thrones. <laughs> okay, good, okay. Maybe maybe you have one recorded already. Right, game, ready game, to go, yeah. Game. I've, never, I've never seen it, but I, the, vice, the former vice president uh, was apparently a big fan of that. Mm -hmm. Gore, Al Gore. Al Gore, okay, yeah. Um, so what else? Um, it's too late. Oh, yeah, too late, mm-hmm. What else? I don't know. Tomorrow would be a better day? Yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'll do it tomorrow. Do it, do it tomorrow. So we can add to this list, but you get, get the gist of it. And then what I, what I do is uh, now, uh, what, what is your name? My name is Fabrice. Okay, I'm also going to be named Fabrice. And I'm going to be the devil. This is called the devil's advocate technique as well mm -hmm. as the TikTok technique. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to tempt you into procrastinating tonight at 7 o'clock. Yeah. And I want to see if you can defeat me. So I'm going to be Fabrice. You be Fabrice. And I'm going to be the ticks and you be the talks. I'll be the task interfering cognitions and you be the task oriented cognitions. Are you ready? Uh, well, we'll try. Okay. Can I don't I, know. Can I talk you for a minute, uh, Fabrice? Yeah. I know you have this assignment that you did with David in your session today uh, to work on your filing for five minutes, but, you know, five minutes isn't, isn't going to help you. It's just a drop in the bucket, and uh, it would just take months to get caught up on your filing. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Um, I'm not, in fact, I'm not sure what the goal is to five minutes. So, yeah, um, I wonder. So who won that exchange? The tick or the talk? The, neg the tempting? I guess the, the tempting, yeah. Yeah, so then maybe we, we should withdraw the assignment then. Maybe you can't defeat that thought. Well, maybe you can explain to me how five minutes is going to help something that's going to take um, hours and hours. Well, um all I can do is help you get started with, with your procrastination. Now, what I've experienced is sometimes when I get started on an unpleasant task, I discover it's not as hard as I thought. For example, maybe it won't be that hard to uh, pick up that first piece of paper or to put it in a file folder or to put the file folder in a drawer. And then I get motivated and I end up spending much more time. But if I tell myself, 
uh, I'm, I'm going to spend hours, then, then it's a guarantee I'll procrastinate. If I tell myself I, I only have to work for five minutes, then I have an excellent chance of overcoming the anxiety and getting started. But that I'm might saying, not be a model that interests you. That's worth a shot. Well, then you're going to have to figure out how to talk back to me because I'm that tempting Fabrice and I want to remind you that five minutes won't help. Um, well, getting started uh, you know, sometimes can lead to you know, doing more than, than the initial um, you know, impulse. Well, that could be, but even if you start for five minutes, you'll just relapse and uh, you know go back to your pro- procrastination. There's no permanent solution to this, so there's no reason to to follow through on this five minute assignment tonight. Well, if if it goes beyond five minutes, actually that might not be true. It will. Uh, I guess it'll depend on how much I, I I can get done. If if I can make a dent, at least that will be encouraging. Yeah, but, but a dent isn't going to work. It's just there's no permanent cure for this, and you know it. You might as well just give up, face the facts. Well, I'm I'm not I'm not sure about that. I mean, that's why I, I uh, started this uh, therapy to begin with. I I believe that you know there's a cure. Yeah, but procrastination is not such a big problem. You've got all your stuff laid out here on your desk. All all the slips and receipts it's all it's all right here and it's never been a big problem for you so there you don't you you shouldn't have well that that's the surface uh story but really every time i look at it i have this little uh, heart pang and it just doesn't feel good well um well that's right so tomorrow would be a really good day to, to to get started on this well, that's true, but uh, Dr. Burns is not going to let me get away with that. Yeah, but you can watch TV instead. You've got that Game of Thrones recorded, and it's all ready to go, and it'd be so exciting. And maybe after the Game of Thrones, you could come down and do a little filing. Yeah, I think that if I get into it, I'm going to binge watch, and I'm going to, you know, it's not going to work. I, I, can, I can do the five minutes, and then I can watch the the series. Yeah, but don't you think it's a little too late now to get started on all that filing? I mean, it's 7 o'clock. You've had a long, hard day at work. and Yeah, but I committed to it, so okay, I, I can do five minutes, even at 7 o'clock. Okay, so who won, would you say? I think I, I put up a good argument with your help. Yeah, I thought you did a good a good job. Then I would ask the patient, are there any loose ends here? Is there anything yeah. I can say to yeah. attempt you further? Is there? Um, no, that that pretty much covers it. Okay, so that that's pretty much the the approach that I've that I've taken. Yeah, um, and and I, I know I give you a hard time because I I've had you know clients who wear resistance. Yes, and and what they're doing, uh, and that was great that you did it that way. They keep tempting the therapist to get into the codependent helping role. Yeah, and 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 most therapists will take the bait, and and if you do, then all bets are off. You're the, you're not going to solve the problem. I can give a personal report on what happened with with me because I think you've got to practice practice what you preach. Yeah, is I did this exact thing, and I can tell you it was very anxiety provoking for me the first the first few minutes because there's a lot of implications to my filing. You know, certain uh, accounting that I have to do on things for for IRS, things I couldn't quite remember. Do, do you follow what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's and, and and so it was. It's really a amount of anxiety. You'd have to face things like, "Oh my God, you know, this is overdue. I'm going to pay a penalty and so on." You know, yeah, like all that. that kind of that kind of stuff. But I, I was surprised that it wasn't that hard to pick up a piece of paper and to uh, throw it into a manila folder. Mm-hmm. I bought a box of them at Costco, so I had, you know, like a hundred of these file folders, and I just scribbled the name, like Bill or yeah. whatever it happened to be, and and I set those in in a pile, actually. I have the file drawers, but I set them temporarily in a pile. Okay, so you did do a pile, see? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, and, and then I, I said that was really pretty easy, and I, I took another one and, and I did the same thing, mm-hmm. and, and some of them I already had file folders with that name, so I just throw them in that, that one, but most of them needed new file folders. And once I started on it, I worked on it for about two hours, and 
had a pile of about 20 or 30 you know, file folders that mm -hmm. I had created. And then I just put them in alphabetical order, which took about maybe 30 seconds, and then just parked them in one of my f empty file drawers. Yeah. And I felt r r really good about it. And, and, and then I just continued that every day. It did take about two months to get it all wow. c cleared up. But w once I got into it, it was something I actually looked, looked forward to each day. And when it finally got all cleared up, I couldn't believe it that I had this empty clean office. Now, you were in my office. I have a couple small piles that I had three small piles mm -hmm. yesterday. And I said, okay, now, as far as relapse prevention, I, and I, I cl cleared up one of them yesterday, and I have two more that are scheduled for, you know, today and tomorrow to get it back to, to perfect again. But it's been pretty easy to, to keep up with it. So what you're saying is that, you know, once you did the first dent into your your uh, filing, then everything else was um, it came more naturally because you found that there was a reward in it. Y yes, uh, it, it, exactly, and, and that's that's the model we talked about at the top of the podcast. That action comes first, m motivation comes uh, comes come second, and it's 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 a really good secret to know about. So, going back to the original email that uh, we read. Uh, actually, that was a comment on your website, I think. Um, so, somebody who's a, who's a procrastinator, uh, uh, Benjamin calls it a lazy person. I don't know if... Yeah, by the way, be... I wouldn't use that term either. Because yeah. when you call yourself a lazy person, you're hypnotizing yourself. Exactly, yeah. Uh, you know, like a hypnotist, oh, you're a dog. And then the patient starts barking and stage hypnosis. Say, yeah. oh, you're a lazy person. Well, there's... Then, oh, well, I won't be able to do this because I'm a, a lazy person. You're yeah. just kind of convincing yourself... Uh, not to do anything. But in response to, to Benjamin, you didn't really give the the patient any homework. I mean, well, he committed to those five minutes. Yeah, and but, that's the homework, to do, to, do that, the, to do that five minutes, to go through that little steps for big yeah, feats. But, you know, anybody who would say, oh, I cannot do five minutes, would even sound ridiculous to himself. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, I cannot spend yeah, five you, minutes you, on that. Yeah. You have to be somewhat kind when you do this because there is a sarcasm behind it. You know, do you need help walking into your office? That's step one. Have you ever been able to get in there before? Yeah, what is I, it you I want can, me to how help can you with? not be sarcastic about it? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I kind of enjoy being a little sarcastic uh, sometimes, and uh, most people are good-natured about it. Some but in, take umbrage. But in some of those questions I answered, yeah, I'd like some help with that, and, and you refuse to give the help. So Yeah, that's... that's, that's so, that's so what's important. behind that? Because well, why would you ask, would you like my help with this if you're not ready to give it? Um, it the... Um, uh, there's a Buddha statement. I don't know if we've brought it up on previous podcasts, but uh, but if you go around, uh, let's see, try to help people, try to help the world, then you view the world as broken. Maybe I don't have that exactly correct. Yeah, no, I see what you're if saying. You're trying yeah. to fix people, then you're viewing them as broken. Yeah, and and so it's it's kind of respectful to to the person, not to try to help them with these absurd. Things when you try to help them, you're entering into this codependent relationship, where you're some superior expert and the patient is like this child, and 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 it's 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 not a healthy, healthy uh, relationship, and it's not really Isn't fair it to the patient. Kind of misleading to say, "Would you like my help with this?" When you're you're not going to provide any. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Uh, so you're you... going to trick the patient into helping themselves, uh -huh. himself or herself. Okay. Well, that that was a, a much longer answer to this uh, one email that I expected. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it took, took a little time, but I thought it did a really good job of bringing both the technique, the new approach to life, as well as illustrating what it's it's like to, to work with someone who's a little on the resistance side. Yeah. Now, haven't you encountered people who, they'll, they'll do their five minutes, um, and they'll stop there, and then they'll come back, at the next session saying, well, I did it, but, you know, nothing else changed. So what, what, what would you say to that? Well, um, then you just have to empathize. Uh, and, and, you know, the, this becomes a, an issue uh, of the therapeutic alliance, among other things. Like when the person says, oh, nothing else changed, what would you say uh, as a therapist using the five secrets of effective communication? Well, I would say, uh, 
Yeah, the, the, that didn't really um, help you um, get jump started on on your filing or on whatever task they they wanted to do. And uh, I'd say that that sounds that's pretty frustrating, and and you may be wondering, may, maybe this you know this approach doesn't work or doesn't work for me, and you you might have uh, maybe a little bit of uh, of uh, resentment toward uh, what I'm proposing to you and toward me. Um, and, I, and I'm quite sorry if that's the case, because I really enjoy working with you. It's, uh, you know, it's been quite, uh, quite uh, nice for me. Um, but I, and I appreciate also the fact that you were willing to, to give it your best. Um, and if you could maybe uh, share with me what, what your thoughts are at this point. I'd have to give you like an A plus or an A on that, and because I thought that was really, really great. This is someone who's clearly kind of angry with you, yeah. and you're going to have to repair that uh, that failure of the therapeutic alliance, that empathy failure, mm -hmm. and 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 uh, that may take a whole whole session. Sounds like a pretty kind of angry angry fellow. And then once, and it might even be someone with borderline personality disorder. Um, because often, I don't want to stereotype these individuals, but they often have this this kind of angry mm -hmm. reaction to being asked to do something to to help themselves and, sure. and to not be in the victim role who, who the therapist is heroically saving. But then after you have empathized with the person, may 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 only take ten or ten or twenty minutes, but there's something you know really strong go going on there in the relationship. And then you would come back to agenda setting, and then you could say uh, something like, "Now I've heard about your what you're unhappy about, and, and now let me ask: Is there something that that we should be be working on together? Is there something you would like my help with?" And then you'd have to reestablish the therapeutic agenda uh, all over again, and it may come back to uh, the uh, procrastination problem, or or it may go in some entirely different direction. Yeah. Okay. Well. Wonderful. I think that uh, concludes today's podcast. Okay. Thank you, Fabrice. Thanks, David. This has been another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast. For more information, visit Dr. Burns' website at feelinggood.com, where you will find the show notes for this podcast under the blog page, and where you can leave your comments and questions. The website has an abundance of resources for therapists, as well as non-therapists, including books, workshops, a list of online training groups around the world, and much more. Theme music is Gypsy Jazz in Paris, 1935, composed and performed by Brett Van Donzel. I am your host, Fabrice Nye, and I invite you to join us next time for another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast.